Hello, Dharma School students and teachers. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, welcome to OCBC and Vista Buddhist Temple Sunday service today. I am happy to deliver this Sunday service. We had a, some rain last week. It was very nice. I really liked it. And uh, I am showing uh, the first screen uh, that's the photo of ume flower. You know, ume is, I think that's an apricot. Uh, it's really, really pretty, you know? And then uh, actually this photo was sent from Kyoko-san. Kyoko-san is a Reverend Gibbs uh, wife of uh, Pasadena Temple. And she sent me to me and telling me, here it is, spring has come already. You know, it's really pretty ume apricot flower. I just want to share with you. So uh, today, uh, first, let me explain the service order. The first, let's read the golden chain. Uh, if you have a service book or if you're able to download the service book from OCBC website, the page eight, okay? And then we will chant Shiju Hachigan. Okay, today, page 44 and uh, probably 48 until 48. There's some translation as well. And then selected saying is page 20, oh, number 21 and page 17. Okay, and I give you a Dharma message. And then we have a musical offering. Seiya, uh, page 152, and um, announcements. Okay, so uh, to start uh, for this service, Juni Kashyo. Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namanda Buts, Namanda Buts, Namanda Buts, Namanda Buts, Namanda Buts. Let's read a golden chain. The golden chain. I am a link in Amida's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I will keep my link bright and strong. May I be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. 
May I think pure and beautiful thoughts, say pure and beautiful words, and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amida's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Buddha, Namo Amida Buddha, Namo Amida Buddha. Now let's chant a Shiju uh, Hachigan. Before that, let me explain a little bit what is Shiju Hachigan. Some of the people were wondering what is Shiju Hachigan. So take a look at this screen. Shiju Hachigan means 48 vows because Shiju means 40 and Hachi is the number eight and Gan is a vow of wishes. So 48 vows. Okay. So there is a 48 vows, but uh, you know, we're going to chant this morning one to 20. So 20 vows we're going to chant together. So when you look at each stanza, each stanza uh, begins with setsu ga toku butsu and ends with the verse fushu shogaku, fushu shogaku. So what it means is when I attain the Buddhahood, should this thing never happen or should it not be so? May I not attain the perfect enlightenment? That's what the Setsuga Toku Butsu and Fushu Shogaku. So actually, these vows appear in the larger sutra of immeasurable life. So those vows were promised by Bodhisattva Dharmakara, Hozo Bosatsu, before becoming. Amida Buddha. So, uh, Hozo Bosatsu, uh, Bodhisattva Dharmakara, explain what kind of Buddha I want to be huh, when I attain the Buddhahood. And what kind of Buddha land I want to establish. And how I can equally liberate all people, all sentient beings. Those are the 48 vows that Makara Bodhisattva promised. So those are very, very important 48 vows. So it is really expressing that Amida Buddha's deep, deep, uh, great compassion to everyone, to others. I want to help you to get enlightened, to get liberated. So that really helped my um, getting, uh, you know, Buddhahood. So setsu ga tokubutsu, fushu shogaku. That's what we were going to chant. All right, so um, please open your service book uh, page. Uh, 44. Okay. Namamida was not us, no man does. Sets Sammakudosha, Fushu Shongak, 
絶が特物国中人伝不信信根時期者不修正学絶が特物国中人伝行式不動不公修者不修正学説が特物国中人伝不式職業下士不知百戦の苦な言うた交渉者者不修正学説が特物国中人伝不特天元下士不見百戦の苦な言うた勝負国者不修正学説が特物国中人伝不特天下下士門百戦の苦な言うた勝負小説不失十字者不修正学説が特物国中人伝不特権多神地下士不知百戦の苦な言うた勝負国中修正新年者不修正学挫折が特物国中人間不特人足大一年表下士不の浄化百戦の苦な言うた勝負国者不修正学絶が特別国中人伝若き少年尊下死者不修正学絶が特別国中人伝不十上十一死滅道者不修正学説が特別巧妙右の原料下士不少百戦の苦な言うた勝負国者不修正学説が特別寿命右の原料下士百戦の苦な言うた校者不修正学説が特別国中職顧問右の計量下士三千大千世界教文円学大百千五失具結局死後修者不修正学説が特別国中人伝寿命無の原料上合本願修短自在脈不二者不修正学
切が特物、国中人間、内視門、不全、容赦、不修、障学、切が特物、立法世界無料勝負、不死死者、障害妙者、不修障学、説が特物、立法修行、死神、心行、欲生が国、内視十年、脈不生者、不修生学、遺上行革、非法上法、説が特物、一方修上、本望大臣、修正空力、自信発願、欲生が国、臨住十字、計量不要、大衆異女、言語人前者、不修正学、説が特物、立法修行、文が名語、経年が国、意気書特本、自信栄光、欲生が国、不可推者、不修生が Thank you for joining、uh, the chanting. She do h a c h i g a n forty eight vows with me. It was beautiful. The next. Let's read a selected saying,、uh, page 17, number 21. You can see the screen. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the ten quarters surrounding us a hundredfold. In thousandfold rejoicing and protect us by Shinran Shonin, Jodo Wasan. 
Namo Amida Buddhas. Namo Amida Buddhas. Namo Amida Buddhas. So this morning, I would like to talk about a compassion. Uh, my title of this Dhamma message is Unfurling of Compassion. The word unfurl means to spread, unfold, and unroll like a flag was hoisted and unfurled to the breeze, something that image. The flag is rolled up, but when you took to some kind of string and the flag is just unfolding and swinging and, you know, rolling in the air, in the breeze. So unfurling of your compassion of Buddha's great compassion, I want to talk about it today. So particularly, let's think about compassion along with a concept of unity and togetherness in our current life. So uh, usually this time of the year, OCBC and Junior YBA welcome the cute girls. Remember about this time at the beginning of uh, February? Well, this year we miss them because of the pandemic. I hope they can come back next year as this uh, photo shows, cute girls attend our Sunday service and sing the gatha, Seya, beautifully. Uh, don't you remember their voices? So beautiful. Yes, we miss them this year. And then after the service, uh, Junior YBB parents kindly prepare the delicious lunch for them. And the Kyoto girls and their teachers appreciate every dish and dessert. And they have a wonderful time with the Junior YBA members doing games and dancing in the afternoon. This photo shows, we took a photo together last year in front of uh, uh, Hondo, all the Kyoto girls students, teachers, and Junior YBA students and parents all together. We are very grateful that our Junior YBA uh, has a wonderful relationship with the Kyoto Girl School. Kyoto Girl School, uh, one of the Honganji uh, related schools, uh, it was founded by Takeko Kujo. The school now has a kindergarten and elementary school those are co-education. And then studying junior high and high school and university and graduate school, those are all girls and women. So as a matter of fact, I studied uh, there uh, from junior high school uh, and uh, university for 10 years. And then Kyoko, uh, of a Pasadena Buddhist temple who sent me a uh, ume apricot photo. She also uh, went to a Kyoto girls school. With a so called incident, we never thought we met again uh, in the United States. Uh, she's much younger, but we went to the same school. It was very, very uh, interesting, isn't it? So uh, Takeko, was born uh, in 1887 as a daughter of 21st Gomonshu, Myonyo Shonin. Myonyo Shonin's portrait, you can see uh, behind me, is the facing to a uh, Naijin 
and on your uh, left side, it's Myonyo Shonin. Myonyo Shonin, 21st Gomonshu spiritual head uh, of Hongranji, and who sent a first minister to San Francisco. Okay. And Takeko um, was his daughter. And she lived only 42 years. But she did so many things in a short life. She was a founder of BWA Fujinkai. So now Fujinkai Association, Buddhist Women's Association, we do have Orange County Buddhist Church in Vista, BWA as well. And all over the world, she is a founder of BWA. And then she established, as I said, Kyoto Girls School. She was very interested in the girls and women education. And she also built Asoka Hospital. And she was a great poet and essay writer. So she composed a seiya, gaja seiya. See, so many things she did. Those were, I think, a Takiko's vows, just a, uh, Bodhisattva Dharmakara made 48 vows, but a Takeko made these vows. Those are the things I want to do it in my life. It's my wishes to complete. So she did it, all of them, in the short life 42 years. This picture is a one of the Kyoto Girls School building called Kinka Den, Kinka Den. Actually, uh, Takeko visited her uh, uh, sister-in-law in this building and spent some time with her and then thinking about how we can make a uh, Kyoto Girl School. It's sort of like they are talking about, you know. Uh, actually, uh, when I was a student, uh, of high school there, I clean up this building uh, every day. I mopped and I clean up the windows and everything. I remember uh, this building very, very much. And in her life, her life was not easy. Uh, in 1923, September 1, there was a great Kanto earthquake and there was a big earthquake and around the Tokyo area, the magnitude 9.0, you can believe, you know, there's a lot of building, everything got destroyed. So, um, but Takeko immediately helped the needy people, uh, giving the food, giving clothes, all the charitable works, day and night. So this photo showing she is giving some kind of kimono or clothes to the people who need, right? She's just giving the food, you know, food and clothes and people are just receiving, thank you very much. And then she's standing on the rubbles and debris. It's really devastated, the Kanto earthquake. And uh, she thought, I think we need a hospital for people, wounded people, and a lot of orphans. So I want to make a hospital. So to make a uh, funds, uh, she published the book, uh, Muyuge, uh, Muyuge book showing on this uh, screen. Um, Muyuge means a uh, flowers without sorrow. And uh, this book is a collection of uh, Takeko's and poems and essays. It was published many, many times. And then the book was sold very good. Everybody liked it. And that's the way she made a uh, funds to uh, make a Asoka Hospital. So after working very, very hard, Takeko got blood disease and passed away at the age of 42 uh, on February 7, 
28. That's exactly today, 93 years ago. So I think this today, February 7, is Kakeko's birthday to become a Buddha in the Pure Land, right? So it's a tremendous lady. And uh, uh, Asoka Hospital was finally built with her uh, funds from uh, the publishing uh, income. And uh, it, the hospital was made a few years after she passed away. She did so many things. She had her own vow. And then in a short life, she completed all the vows. Her contribution was tremendous. Very much. I really think Takeko a wonderful work. So one of the poem she wrote is Seiya. We have a musical offering Seiya today, but uh, before we listen to it, let's read a Seiya together. Okay, Seiya is a page one fifty two. Seiya, Hoshi no yodora no utsukushisa. Dare kawa shiru ya ame no nazo. Musu no hitomi kagayake ba. Kangi ni nagomu waga kokoro. The translation is splendor of an evening sky filled with countless stars. Who can ever fathom its timeless mystery? Millions of lights when sparkling bright in the sable sky, touch my heart, my lonely heart with serenity. More than all the countless sands, Ganges river holes are the infinite Buddhas who fill this universe ever watchful over us throughout the day and night. Hearing this, my lonely heart fills with lasting peace. That's a beautiful verse. I think uh, Takeko uh, felt, must have felt the countless Buddhas throughout the universe when she recite Namo Amida Buddha. And all the Buddha embrace her in great compassion, great compassion. And Takeko starts unfurling her compassion for others. I think this seiya is pretty much interrupt or interact with Shinran Shonin saying that we just read when we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the ten quarters surrounding us a hundredfold and thousandfold rejoicing and protect us. Probably she enjoyed the Shinran Shonin's verse and she might have made this seiya very much. So I went to uh, Takeko's school, Kyoto uh, Girls School uh, when I was going to go to school, my, I asked my father, Father, why you want me to uh, study at the Kyoto Girls School? And why you want me to attend a morning service? Why, why you want me to uh, study the Buddhism? And why you want me to attend the local temple Dharma school? I have so many questions. And my father never say a straight answer to me. 
he said, well, you will know when you grow up. And I was pondering many years what he meant. But now I think my father probably meant like Mutsumi, you can bend, but you don't break. Ah, probably that's what he wanted me to realize by studying at Kyoto Girls School and uh, attending their morning service and also local temple Dharma schools. That's my father's message. I can bend, but I cannot break, I think. So lastly, I'd like to thank you, all the uh, Dharma school teachers for their tireless effort to provide a Dharma school lessons every week, virtually, someday in person. Thank you very much for hard work every week. And I'm very happy that we have a wonderful Dharma school, one of the biggest school under BCA, and a lot of students enjoy listening to the Dharma message, singing a song. And I myself was very happy, was able to uh, study at Kyoto Girls School, attend uh, Sunday service and morning service in local temple Dharma school. So thank you very much for listening to my message. And uh, to conclude my message, please join me. Kashio, please. Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz. Now uh, we have a musical offering. Uh, Janet Sakahara plays piano. Seiya, please enjoy and let's uh, sing together.
Janet. That was a beautiful and we enjoy singing Seiya by Kujo Takeko. So now announcements. Today's drama school, uh, that's Fuji, the first grade, Kiku, fifth grade, and Sumire, sixth grade, Hasu, seventh grade, and Matsu, high school. Please enjoy your class today. And today is a Scout Sunday. So uh, our Boy Scout would like to show that presentation. Here you go. While working towards my song award, I've learned how to be more grateful and appreciative of things. Like basketball, for example. I used to not like going to basketball practices because I didn't like them that much. But because of COVID, I've learned to appreciate them more because they're more enjoyable now. Because it's something that I don't get to do as often anymore. And I think that for Scott to be reverent, that they respect somebody based on their religion, and that they don't make fun of somebody for their religion. Hi, my name is Travis Nagahir, and I would like to tell you about what I learned in my song class. This is a class where we learned about Buddhism and some parts of the religion. Something that I learned in this class is the importance of reverence. Reverent is a word in scout law, but some of us don't know what it means. Essentially, reverence means a deep respect for a religion, in this case, Buddhism. It is important to learn about different religions so we could be aware of them and be respectful towards them. Learning about this religion is especially helpful because most people in Troop 578, including me, are members of the church. My name is Jack from Troop 578, and in Sangha, I learned how to be grateful for the things that I have. And being reverent as a scout, for me, means being respectful when you practice your religion. Thank you, Boy Scouts. That was wonderful. I want to thank you to all the Boy Scout members and parents for their uh, hard work and always helping OCBC. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you all attending the service and please take care and see you next week. Namami Davuts, Namami Davuts, Namami Davuts.